Today we're going to be talking about one of the two most unique planets in the solar system, the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. So let's dive right into it. Uranus and Neptune are the seventh and eighth planets from the sun. And they are very special because they are a type of gas giant known as an ice giant, which is probably because of their extremely cold temperatures. In fact, Uranus is actually the coldest planet in the solar system. Well, sort of. Neptune is the coldest, but Uranus has the record of having the coldest temperature ever recorded in human history on a planet. The average temperature on Uranus is about 195 degrees Celsius, below zero. And the coldest it has ever been on Uranus is about 224 degrees Celsius, below zero. And in fact, that negative 224 degrees Celsius is the coldest that any planet has been, as I previously mentioned. Uranus is also incredibly far away from the sun, and it being an astonishing 19 AU away from the sun. As a result, Uranus has a pretty long um, elliptical orbit, and its orbit takes about 84 years to complete. Yeah, you heard me right, I didn't just say anything wrong. 84 years. When most people reach 84 years, which not all people reach right away in their lifetimes, they would be one on Uranus. Uranus is the only planet in the solar system that doesn't orbit counterclockwise like most other planets do, or clockwise like Venus does. It orbits on its side, like this. So yeah, pretty unnatural, I don't know. The reason why it orbits in this really strange um, motion is that Uranus's axis, its axis, instead of being like this, like a straight line, or a slightly tilted like Earth's axis, for that matter, it's completely on its side, which means that Uranus has a axis that is about more or less 180 degrees tilted. It, as a result, it also has the axis that is most tilted on its side. Uranus is third in the amount of moons it has, with it having 27 known moons. One of these moons, Miranda, actually has a cliff on it that if you were to fall off of it, it would actually take a few seconds to reach the bottom. Some of the other moons include Puck, Ariel, Al Albrion, I think I said that right, Cressida, Mem... The, I'm, no, I'm not doing this again. Like Saturn, Uranus actually has rings. However, these rings are not visible to the naked eye. In fact, you need a near-infrared telescope in order to see these rings. And even then, you can see that they're pretty faint. The reason why is also the reason why um, Saturn's enormous ring that was discovered only recently, just a few years ago, is actually undetectable via normal means of light. Because the rings are made of dust, nothing more. Very light dust, and that makes the rings almost unseeable unless used with an infrared camera, in which case the heat of the dust is actually visible because, you know, you're seeing it in infrared. As a result, Uranus actually has rings. And can you guess what way the rings are pointing? I'm not even giving you any time to guess. They're pointing the wrong way, just like Uranus itself. Although Uranus may seem like one of the more calmer planets, it actually does still have very violent storms. These storms have been spotted on numerous occasions, and this is just one example of one of them. Uranus is probably the most special planet for the fact that it was discovered in recorded history. In fact, it was the first planet to be discovered in recorded history. On the 13th of March, 1781, William Herschel observed the planet, but at first he thought it was a comet because it would be ludicrous to think that you would have discovered another planet in the solar system. And at this point, the discovery of exoplanets was still just a theory. 
However, as he observed Uranus more, he started to notice some strange qualities about it and figured that it was a new planet. He went on to name it the Georgium Sidus, which meant the Georgium Star. However, this didn't really hold up well with other people. Interestingly enough, the name Neptune was actually thrown around for the name of Uranus. And even others like King George, yeah, that King George, you know, the one that was spiraling into insanity and all. But eventually, however, the name Uranus settled in and now we know it as Uranus. Uranus's discovery, however, also led to the discovery of the other planet that we're going to be covering in this video, Neptune. Neptune was discovered with the all-powerful math. Neptune's discovery was because of slight inconsistencies in Uranus's orbit, which caused, caused it to sort of move in its orbit, sort of wobble in it. And as a result, scientists concluded that so there was some other object that was sort of tugging on Uranus and moving in, in its orbit. In 1845 to 1846, Urban Le Verrier, I think I said that right, discovered Neptune. And the reason why and how he discovered it is because when he used the mathematical orbits of Uranus, he determined the spot where Neptune should be. And lo and behold, he found something, something that matched the characteristics of a planet and now Neptune was a new planet. And that is pretty much how Neptune was discovered. Probably the coolest discovery of a planet. Neptune orbits the sun at about an astonishing 30 AU. And as a result, the years on Neptune are a bit long, let's just say. One year on Neptune is about 150 years on Earth. 150. You know I didn't mess up because that is a word that is very hard to mess up with. This means that me, unless there's immortality achieved in the future, I'm not even gonna turn one on Neptune. So Neptune is another ice giant and it's mostly the same composition as Uranus. It's made of hydrogen and helium like all gas giants but also has trace amounts of methane and other gases as well. Neptune, however, has a darker blue, and this is because it has more methane on its surface than Uranus. And as a result, Neptune has sort of a darker, but more violet blue than Uranus. Neptune didn't even have any close-up photographs, and neither did Uranus, until the Voyager 2 spacecraft got up close and personal with these two planets. On its way to the outside of the solar system, it got some beautiful photographs that you're seeing right here of both of these amazing planets. At the time of the photographs that were taken that you're seeing right now, you can actually see uh, on the photographs here, Neptune has a sort of dark spot. It has what is known as the Great Dark Spot. This is another storm that is on Neptune, and this storm didn't last for long. It actually lasted for only a couple years. The next time Neptune was observed and up and close with a space telescope, the spot was gone completely. However, a new spot had emerged on Neptune at that time on the more northern hemisphere, but that one went away as well. Neptune's storms that are sporadically placed over time are really strong, however. These storms are even stronger than the Great Red Spot. In fact, the Great Dark Spot was recorded at a really high speed. Around the time of recording, Neptune has about 14 moons that have been discovered. One of these moons, Triton, is likely to have been a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, which we'll talk about in the next video, and was pulled in because of Neptune's immense gravity. Neptune has about 14 moons at the time of recording, and one of these moons, Triton, is actually extremely cold. In fact, it has some of the coldest temperatures in the solar system. And it is definitely, if you don't count the uh, trans-Neptunian objects in the Kuiper Belt, the coldest object in the solar system. Neptune still hopes to be the last planet in the solar system. However, it wasn't for a long time. Pluto, which was discovered in 1930, by Saito Tombaugh was actually given the title of 
the last planet in the solar system, or the ninth one at the very least, at the time of its discovery. However, in 2006, Pluto didn't meet the characteristics that a planet should. This is, these are actually the same characteristics that Ceres didn't meet when it was discovered and it was degraded down to an asteroid. When Pluto didn't meet one of these characteristics, which was the fact that it didn't clear its neighborhood, it was disqualified as a planet and then turned into a dwarf planet. As a result, however, because Ceres was at this point an asteroid, it did meet these characteristics, at least some of them, and it was upgraded to a dwarf planet, so we can't say that it was bad for everyone. Anyway, nobody cares about Pluto, right? 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 The name Uranus is also very unique because it is the only name in the solar system that a planet has that isn't by a Roman god. The name Uranus comes from the Greek god of the sky and the heavens, Uranus. In Greek mythology, it is said that the universe was created by two gods, Uranus, the, guy, the god of the sky and the heavens, and Gaia, the god of the earth, or goddess, I should probably say. Uranus was given the name to, well, Uranus, after all those other names, as you know, Hirsch, you know, the George and Cytus, the Neptune even at one point, and even at one point King George and Herschel at, at one point too, all those names that were given to Uranus, eventually Uranus stuck on, and that's what the planet became. Neptune comes from the Roman god of the sea, which, you know, matches perfectly with Neptune's characteristics. Neptune, the god, actually has also a Greek equivalent, and this equivalent is Poseidon. However, Poseidon had a son, Triton, and Triton is the name of one of Neptune's moons. You can say that Triton is Neptune's son. A day on Uranus is about 17 hours, and a day on Neptune is about 16 hours. That's only an hour difference. And these two also are the last two gas giants in the solar system. And they actually all, all the gas giants, have a day that is under one Earth day, which as you know is 24 hours. This is because gas giants, although they are huge and enormous, they orbit really quickly. In fact, you can see this a lot on Jupiter. It's actually a ball, as I said in the Jupiter video. And if you want to check out the Jupiter video, then check it out on the guy on the top of the screen of the video. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I'm Nick. Remember, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a like, and my goal is to feed your brain. I am using a Samsung phone.